The rabbit hole of Sweet Baby Inc. goes deeper than what we initially suspected. The company is now being defended by an organization that has ties to the federal government and is in fact funded by the federal government and the Department of Homeland Security. Before we get into this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at The Trent Report. Wrote this up over at That Park Place this morning, and an organization called Take This is encouraging game developers to denounce gamers who are being harassed by Sweet Baby Inc. Yes, indeed, that is what is happening. We truly live in clown world, and this organization, Take This, has received substantial funds from the Department of Homeland Security back in 2022. So just to get you caught up on what's going on, we have this organization take this. They posted this on their blog. The organization is run by a woman named Dr. Rachel Cowart. That is her right there. And she instructs game developers to denounce gamers for defending themselves from Sweet Baby Inc., First, the organization's blog post states, if you're reading this, you've probably been hearing about what's now being called Gamergate 2. It's the latest targeted harassment campaign within the game industry, and it's aimed at Sweet Baby Inc., a Montreal-based narrative development studio. This is an outright lie. It is Sweet Baby Inc. that is running a targeted harassment campaign. Employees Chris Kindred and Maya Kramer launched their harassment campaign at the end of February following Brazilian gamer Cabrutus Rambo creating a Steam curator list, listing off all of the games that Sweet Baby Inc. worked on that are available on Steam, and he doesn't recommend them. It's basically a boycott list. He's basically saying, these are all the games that Sweet Baby Inc. has worked on, and I don't think you should buy them. I'm not recommending them. And I think people are indeed using it as a boycott list. Uh, it has over 250,000 followers um, last I checked, which was uh, last night. But this is what Kindred posted on X back at the end of February and made it clear that she was not only trying to get the Steam Curator list taken down, but she was also trying to ensure that Cabrutus Rambo's entire Steam account was shut down. Kindred wrote this. The Steam Curator harassment group Sweet Baby Inc. detected is led by this person, Cabrutus Rambo. Here's them trying to be slick so they don't get reported. Even with the discriminatory language filed off, the group itself still fails the code of conduct. Kindred wrote, anyway, report the F out of this group and then concluded and report the creator since he loves his account so much. Basically, in, like telling Steam and Valve to steal the games that he purchased with his hard earned money. I mean, it doesn't get any more vile than this. Not only are they trying to steal from him, they're also trying to silence and shut him down. Truly vile and despicable. And this is indeed harassment and leading a harassment campaign. This is what Sweet Baby Inc. is doing. And it wasn't just Kindred. And then we have Maya Kramer, another Sweet Baby Inc. employee, encouraging people with authority to shut down the Sweet Baby Inc. detected Steam curator list. Kramer wrote, Sorry, no one thing has changed. The number of people who understand that spreading misinformation just lets them be racist in public with no consequence has increased dramatically. That has changed probably require some fighting from those with authority. So obviously just accusing accusing people of being racist for opposing their company's obvious racist policies and then and then wanting them to be silenced. I mean, they, you can't even make it up here. These are the ones who are launching the harassment campaign. They create straw men, they're accusing people of racism without any evidence and then they want them to be shut down by people with authority. And Kramer made it clear she was referring to the Steam curator list. She wrote this. For example, Steam doesn't have any it doesn't have guidelines for creators, as far as I can tell, that would prevent someone from starting a creation group that focuses on, say, Sweet Baby Inc. and warns people to not buy games they're associated with, which could just list any games at all. So obviously not happy with the Steam curator list. Shares shared a screenshot there as well. And these tactics are not unheard of for Sweet Baby Inc. The company CEO, Kim Belair shared how she encouraged individuals to use fear and cancel mobs to influence game developers. She said this during a 2019 presentation at the Game Developers Conference. This is just five years ago. If you're creative working in AAA, which I did for many years, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for that, well, let's just listen to what she has to say here. Let's take a listen. 
Do not wait until the end to call your consultants. Bring them in at the beginning and instead of asking them, hey, is this very racist thing we did very racist or is this deeply offensive thing we did deeply offensive, are you hurt by it? Ask them what they want to see, like ask them what would thrill them, what would bring them joy and if you have a team lead, put that request to them very, very early. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups and if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they terrify them. She wants you. She wants these people to terrify the game developers. Don't give you what you want because they have to consider like I, I say that all out as a joke, but it's actually very, very true because if you start to consider the people who are player and audience facing and who have to deal with mitigating harm and with keeping the sentiment around their game and their project positive, there's like a genuine value that you could impress upon them with um, both ethically and financially. You can say that this is important. And it's also a valid discussion to have because if you're... It's actually unethical. She's literally talking about discrimination and um, quotas. Uh, so that's completely unethical. And then she's also talking, this is 2019, remember? So this is at the, the height of woke cancel mobs on X. So that's exact. So that is what she is talking about. Or at least it was Twitter back then. That's what she's talking about. She's talking about, if you don't do this, you are going to face the wrath of the cancel mobs that we will activate. Do you remember what we did in 2020 with the George Floyd riots? Well, we're going to do that to your company if you don't do what we tell you to do. That's exactly what she is saying right here. Working with a very thin narrative budget and you work in AAA, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised or dismayed by the amount of money that marketing can give you. And then she's bragging about how much money she's made off of this tactic here. I mean, utterly disgusting, despicable woman right there. And obviously she's leading her company and we see how, how what kind of leader she is by the despicable behavior of her employees engage in. And I would not be surprised if they were probably instructed by her to target Sweet Baby Inc. Detected and Cabrutus Rambo. But you, th that's what this company does. Those are the tactics. She said this in 2019 and then they, we saw them in action just at the end of february so despite this overwhelming evidence that sweet baby inc is the one leading a harassment campaign and is trying to steal cabrutus rambo's games by having a steam account shut down take this instructs game developers this is what they they write in their blog post you may be inclined to be quiet or cautious but that's actually not helpful as noted in our resource, Empowering the Game Industry, a major lesson learned from Gamergate was the importance of talking out loud or taking a loud public stance. Excuse me. The organization continues. At the time, many studios were hesitant to address the hate and abuse from Gamergate in any meaningful way. The reasons varied, but usually this hesitation was born out of fear of losing profits or concern that taking a stance would attract the attention of the Gamergate mob. Obviously, gaslighting to the galore here. Talked about this in a previous video. All these people know how to do is lie to try and spread their narrative, despite the overwhelming evidence against it. Take this, then asserts, in other words, failure to clearly and unequivocally denounce Gamergate and the harassment and abuse done in its name created a space for that hate and abuse to flourish, spread, and become normalized. Hate, harassment, and toxic behavior have no place in games. By taking direct, targeted action in a timely manner, we can mitigate further harm to talented, dedicated folks in games and help prevent additional resources of these harmful events. This is projection, clear and simple. They are accusing their victims of what they are actually doing in order to position themselves as victims because in our current ridiculous clown world society, being a victim is somehow some preferred status. It's utterly ridiculous, especially when that victim status you are getting is obviously from immoral actions, right? Uh, and they're clearly doing this. Uh, to not only garner support for their own cause, but to use it as a bludgeon to attack their opponents and do actual financial harm to them, in this case, through the theft of Cabrutus Rambo's games. That's exactly what they're trying to do. And uh, when she's talking about this, she literally wants all this stuff shut down. We just saw the article from Bryant Francis over at Game Developer. He clearly was trying to influence Steam and Discord to get the Steam curator list shut down, as well as the Discord channel shut down as well. That's what these people want. They want it shut down. They It is, it is immoral. What they're doing is immoral. Here is the tie with the U.S. government. 
Take This is funded by the U.S. government. The Department of Homeland Security announced the organization would re receive a split of nearly $700,000 in grant money for the, tar for the department's targeted violence and prevention capabilities. Specifically, DHS shared that the organization would receive the grant money as part of the Middlebury's Center on Terrorism, Extremism, and Counterterrorism to raise societal awareness, provide media literacy, and online critical thinking initiatives, and to do civic engagement. Uh, the description on DHS's website states, over the past decade, video games have increasingly become focal points of social activity and uh, identity creation for adolescents and young adults. Relationships made and fostered within game ecosystems routinely cross over into the real world and are impactful parts of local communities. Correspondingly, extremists have used video games and targeted video game communities for activities ranging from propaganda creation to terrorist mobilization and training. Game developers in general, from small independent studios to billion-dollar multinational corporations, have lagged in awareness of how extremists may attempt to exploit their games and how their communities can be targeted for radicalization. Then reveals, take this, as well as a company or an organization called Logically, were the beneficiaries of the $699,763 grant. It reads, this joint project from the Center on Terrorism, Extremism, and Counterterrorism, take this and logically seeks to develop a shared framework for understanding extremism in games. This includes the development of a set of best practices and centralized resources for monitoring and evaluation of extremist activities, as well as a series of training workshops for the monitoring, detection, and prevention of extremist exploitation in gaming spaces for community managers, multiplayer designers, lore developers, mechanics designers and trust and safety professionals well what is ex exactly is that <laughs> it is basically let's skip down here real quick it's basically the uh, social justice uh brad glasgow uh shared this on x uh from a presentation that the organization did at a games for change festival and uh he says the take this organization and basically promote social justice and all the usual bs you would expect a bunch of people who love preaching with powerpoint but without the data or research to back this up basically it it, it goes after uh white male gamers uh in, in this little uh powerpoint slide i mean this is exactly what we saw with kim belair in her 2019 Game Developers Conference, where she described straight white male gamers as picky babies. She said, I think in our industry and in so many creative industries, if you want to look at film and television and, and any art form, we start treating our core demographics as a fixed and static value, something that does not want to change and something that is locked in place. So despite the changing face of audiences, despite the changing face of conferences like this one, we still look at our core demographics and say, okay, they're white, cis, hetero males, and we cater almost exclusively to them. And the problem is that we don't just cater to them, like, you know, here's something that we think you'll enjoy. We cater to them like a picky baby. She went on and said, we feed them the same thing that we know that they love and we keep on feeding it. We're like, here you go. We know you love it. Eat this, eat this, eat this. So then when they get anything else, they react as a picky baby would, which would be like, oh, no, thank you. I do not want this. And we're actually, and we've actually done this so long that what we're doing is creating an entire nation of picky babies. And they make us scared to deviate from what we actually want to do, just in case these picky babies don't want to play our games. I mean, she doubled down on this metaphor later in her presentation, saying, I do like to imagine that when we look at white guys, and there's several of you here, I think when we look at you, we say, okay, you can't possibly enjoy this. But I think they want also, and maybe you want also, to experience new and different stories. I think we need to step out of this rule that like white men can enjoy fantasy worlds, aliens, sci-fi, monsters, anything, so long as it's through a lens that looks exactly like them. Because if that's the kind of person that we're always going to cater to, you're never going to innovate. You're never going to change things. You're going to keep feeding the picky baby. And we cannot continue to try to create art under a system that is going to bar innovation for fear of a picky baby throwing a tantrum. So utterly disgusting behavior from Kim Belair. But let's get back to this uh, organization run by this woman, Dr. Cowart. Take this. Uh, so not only is it funded by the federal government, but according to Ars Technica's Ashley Belanger, Cowart created the organization after encountering, uh, quote, a 2019 nationally representative survey from the Anti-Defamation League. It found that nearly one in four respondents were exposed to extremist white supremacist ideology in online games. Belanger also reported the primary goal of the organization. She said this, take this, uh, research director Rachel Cowart told Ars Technica that the primary objective of the project is to develop gaming industry-focused resources. Her group's ambitious plan is to reach out to big companies first, then engage smaller companies and indie, indie developers for maximum impact. Interestingly, 
in a Game UX 2022 presentation that was sponsored by Bungie. It's actually on the Bungie YouTube channel. Uh, Cowart admitted the polling <laughs> that inspired her to create this organization was completely bogus. Uh, she said in 2019, the Anti-Defamation League reported that nearly one in four was uh, was 23% of game players are exposed to white supremacist ideology in game. And honestly, somebody asked me earlier how I got into this work because it seems like a very niche area, but it was this report. When I saw that, I thought that number is so high, it can't be that high. It can't possibly be that high. And I called Daniel Kelly, who uh, was part of the Anti-Defamation League, who led this research, and he was like, no, that's the number. And I was like, okay, we have to do something about that. That's terrifying. She then said this. In 2021, they did another report looking at the same thing, and they found the number was closer to 1 in 10, but it's unclear whether this is actually a change in the landscape or just differences in sampling as it is with research sometimes. So she's just admitting that it went from one in four to one in 10, possibly in two years. And then she's like, oh, well, I don't really know why that's the case. Who knows what it really is. Sometimes you just, we just make up these numbers in research. You know, that's just how it is. I mean, uh, how can you just, I mean, she's literally just lying. Her whole organization is built on a lie. And she admitted here, maybe maybe if you saw a giant uh, change from 2019 to 2021 in two years, you might think, oh, well, maybe this whole thing is bogus. Maybe that would pop into your mind. Clearly not, because she doesn't care. It's not about um, the truth with these people. These people are all about pushing their narrative, pushing their lies, pushing what they want to see in the world. Uh, reality be damned. It's absolutely disgusting, disgusting behavior. So... Uh, that is what Take This is doing. They are coming to the defense of Sweet Baby Inc. They are funded by the federal government and they are gaslighting people. They are lying uh, and they are not actually telling the truth. And it is absolutely despicable that our hard earned taxpayer dollars are now being used uh, against us and trying to demonize us by these wicked, wicked people. Let me know what you guys make of this in the comments below. Remember to always be charitable, but to always speak the truth.